Okay, um, after my last video where I did show you a tutorial about how I did render the Boba Fett girl from Olivier Couston and Maya and Octane, I got a lot of questions from people asking me how do I do my layer shader and why do I do layer shader. Um, today I will not do a tutorial, I will do more like a show and tell. To do though, I will be showing you a model I'm working on lately. It's a, it's a great, amazing 3D model modeled by a, guy, a French guy called uh, Samuel Compin. Actually, if you Google his name or if you go to his webpage, you will see and recognize some of his work, which have been heavily featured on uh, Zebra Central. He's an amazing artist and he's also a very cool guy. I mean, he's cool enough to let me play with his model. And I really like it. I mean, those models are amazing. They have just the right amount of stylization, uh, which is something I really like. And at some point, I might ask him actually to let me render this one. But we are not so far for right now. And for right now, we go back to the Potomkin. That's a very muscular dude he did model some time ago. And um, let's see what I have in my file first. Uh, very important. I have my um, environment, obviously. And I also have that light. Uh, later on about that light, why I have a light here. But for now, let's uh, make sure we are rendering only on one graphic card because I want to be able to record properly and not have any frame rate stuttering. And uh, let's see what we get. IP here, down, rendering here. Let me bring that window over there. So maybe um, let's get a bit closer to it, something like that just to get a simple ID. The HDI I'm using in the background is a very well-known one. It's called uh, Peppermill, I think. It's coming from the collection from Christian Bloch. He did write a book about HDI. I think it's called um, HDI. I don't remember the name of the book, but you can actually Google his webpage. Just uh, Google Christian Bloch or um, the wonderful tool he did write, which is a tool to do ICBL in Maya. And it's called, I, uh, I don't remember the name of the tool actually. I need to check it again later. At the end of the video, I will show you the link to go to his webpage. But for now, let's go back to uh, my outliner somewhere. Uh, here, grab the light, which is, uh, where's my light? Actually, I lost my light. Uh, Octane Sense Sky Transform. It's always pain in the butt to find the light, but we can probably find it under Utility and Octane Light. And uh, let's put it somewhere at uh, 5K. So now we see a little bit better. So why Potomkin is so interesting? Well, basically it's the same idea as with the Boba Fett. It's like, it's an armor. And the armor have a lot of uh, different material. In this case, I have three different material. I have the bare metal, I have the paint, and I have some kind of dirt grime going around. And later I will show you also about the skin shader. So for now, Material, let's grab the armor here. As you can see, I have the armor, which is very simple. I have the bare metal, and I have a mask. Why do I use a mask? It's just because I don't want to have to deal with a specular map. I think a specular map, a thing of the past. And over the last uh, maybe four years, since I started to work with V-Ray in Maya, probably three years ago, I started to work a lot with layer material. What that allowed me to do is actually to change stuff in quasi real time. Uh, here you can see the mask. If I remove it, I lose all the the, um, the meta. Uh, the mask is very simple. It's just a black and white image. Nothing very crazy. And the idea is that, okay, my mask is here. And if I want to make the bare metal, I don't know, maybe uh, something. Let's look at the diffuse. Um, let's invert the diffuse. It will be white. Then maybe if I want to make the specular to be blue let's make a blue specular here octane dirt octane boom 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 where's my i'm losing it rgb spectrum here and let's give him a red now i'll give it blue i like blue so as you can see now i have blue specular going on and since i did invert my texture some crazy stuff is happening but it's kind of interesting it's allowed me really to change in real time and have different value so here we get it and I don't have to deal with the specular map. I don't have to go back in Photoshop or Mudbox or ZBrush and repaint my specular map. That's actually what I want to avoid. I want to be able to change stuff in real time very easily. So that will be for the armor. Then we go further. What do I have else? I have the armor layer material here. I have a dirt material, which is, let's put it, maybe not red, but let's make it green just to be able to see it better. 
And as you can see, the, the green materia here is driven by the dirt map. What does that mean? That means if I invert it, that's what we get. And I can start to play with all the different parameters, like the strength, zero, make it strength, the detail, see the radius, can make it smaller, bigger. So and change all those values. So basically that's the ID for the mix material or layer material. That's very important to me. That's a type of workflow I really, really don't want to miss in any render package. Um, I can kind of lost if I don't have it anymore. I really feel like painting a specular map is such a pain in the butt. But anyway, uh, let's move now to uh, maybe the skin, which is something a lot of people are interested into. This skin is a very simple one. I did not do anything too crazy with it. Uh, maybe we should give it a little bit more light. Uh, light here and maybe um, let's see what do we have here where's my light utility light maybe uh, 10k should be enough to see better and um, what about looking something here so and then maybe the environment give it more power like uh, one so what I did with the skin is very simple actually I have my skin gloss here with uh, turbulence that I use in the specular to have some variation in my specular and I have a first mix layer. In this mix layer I mix my gloss material together with my subsurface scattering which uh, uh, give us that actually. Let me remove this one here that's a fall off. Let's go here and let me show you what happened if I do that. Right now you are seeing only the subsurface scattering effect. It's quite strong, pinkish, the way I like it. And uh, 0 0.675, 65, I get a nice mix of the material of the um, subsurface scattering and the glossiness. And on top of that, I also mix into the result of that material another one, which is a very, very strong specular material that is driven, and that's where it's become interesting, as you can see, my the amount of my mix is not driven by a mask or not driven by a slider, but driven by a falloff texture. What's a falloff texture? Basically, a falloff texture is something like um, a, a fake Fresnel effect, meaning that if I move my normal to one, you see that I get more specular in the nice are in the, the border area. If I move it to zero, everything is gone, and I only get the specular from the mix material. So. Um, yeah, basically that's the result of using um, using um, mix material. Again, that video is very short. The idea was not to do a tutorial. The idea was just to show you a little bit more about mix material. And those mix material are very important, especially in Octane or even in V-Ray. It's like you can layer them at Vitam Eterna, meaning you can have like Ten, I think the most uh, layer I got in V-Ray was like 15 layer where I did have everything going from the bare metal to the scratch, to the dirt, to the blood, to the mud, dry dirt, mud, water. I did have a, mat a very crazy material, but the results are very good and it's very easy to modify stuff. I hope you did enjoy this very short video and uh, we'll see you later when I do a proper walk through this character and from the beginning to the final. See you later.